Afternoon, folks. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School back out here at the Pathfinder Outdoor Kitchen. What I thought we'd do today is make some traditional southern fried chicken. I'm going to show you how to do that. And the reason I'm doing this is I have a skillet out here, a field company cast iron skillet. And they're fairly new. They've probably only been used once if they've been used that much. And I need to get this thing seasoned up. It's not near as seasoned as some other skillets that didn't come pre-seasoned like the Stargazer cast iron did. And one of the best ways to season anything is to just fry in that bad boy. So we're going to fry up some southern fried chicken today. We're going to make our batter up because that's the most important element of this whole thing. Stay with me and we'll get started, guys. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our milk and egg wash. And we've got a nice big Ziploc bag here. And this is going to throw you off a little bit, but this is going to be one of your best secret ingredients to this whole thing. This is a onion dip or soup mix from Lipton. Now, instead of using this, I'm going to take one pack of this out of here. Instead of using this mix in our breading, we're going to use it in our wash. The reason for that is, is because it's going to marinate a little bit and let those seasonings marinate into our chicken before we even bread it. So we're going to throw that in, and we're going to throw, let me get in this egg container here, doubled up. We're going to put two eggs in this bag. And hopefully no shell, because that sure didn't, work out real well, but that's okay. That one's not too shabby. I don't really have a hard surface to break these against other than the side of this plastic table. There we go. All right, I don't see any shell in there. Unless that's a piece of shell right there, maybe. I think it is. Get rid of that and then we're okay. The rest of that is seasoning. Now we're gonna put some milk in here. Just like that. And we're going to Ziploc this dude up and we're really gonna just destroy this and mix it up. There's no need to mess around with beating those eggs and all that stuff before we pour them in here because we can do all that in the bag. So this wash bag is gonna be good enough. Now, once we do that, we're gonna put a little bit more milk in here because I want enough in here of this wash to basically submerge my chicken in when the time comes here directly. And it's nice and cold because it just came out of the cooler. So we'll let that sit to the side for just a second here. Get rid of some of our trash. Hey Zon, how you doing buddy? So you came to investigate things. Got our trash can under here. Pretty good, okay now, we've got three thighs here. Just regular bone-in thighs with all the skin and the fat on them. And that's exactly what I want. I like the dark meat chicken. So we're gonna throw them bad boys in here, just like this. Get them good and saturated. Now, in a perfect world, we would take this bag and we would put this back in the cooler for two or three hours, up to overnight. Laying sideways, kind of, or whichever way will submerge the chicken the best. Something like this would work just fine. To let that marinade soak into the chicken. Okay. While that's sitting off to the side or in the cooler, marinating, we're going to make our batter. And flour is going to be the first component of this. So we're going to use one half, basically one cup of flour. Everything else that we add to this is what's going to either make it great or make it semi-great. First thing, soul food seasoning. Let me get my spoon here. 
we're going to add a full tablespoon of this soul food seasoning and then a second tablespoon. Now we're going to come in and we're going to add a few things on top of that. We're going to put about a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder in there. A quarter tablespoon, excuse me. About a quarter tablespoon of cayenne pepper. And if I can get it out of here. It's got some moisture on it. A quarter tablespoon of onion powder. And you say, well, some of those things are probably already in the soul food seasoning, and they are. And that's why we were cognizant of how much we put in there, because there ain't enough anyway. So now we're going to mix this all up. And I'm going to tell you the same thing I say all the time. If I can't see it, there ain't enough in there. And the secret to good batter is just taste it. If it tastes good to you before you put it on the chicken, it's going to be good when the chicken gets fried. Now, last thing we're going to put in here is our ground pepper. I always put that in last. Again, I want enough ground pepper in this dude that I can see the pepper or it's not enough. So we'll just grind this dude in here. So it looks like we got a good coating on the top of the flour. And then we will mix it all in. And make sure we can still see some pepper in there. Okay. Now we're going to taste it. Pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. It's actually almost perfect. That's, man, that's actually almost perfect. Okay. So, get rid of whatever flour we had left in that. Now we got to heat up some oil. Okay, so we're going to put enough canola oil in here, or vegetable oil, it doesn't matter, to fill up about half of that pan. So we're cooking one side and then the other side on this chicken. And we want this to be about 350 degrees. We're going to heat it up slowly. Remembering we've got new cast iron here and we don't want to overheat the oil and get it so hot that it's bubbling and going crazy. We just want to sheen on top of the oil and see a few ripples in there. We want 350 degrees. We can test that with a thermometer if we want to, or we can just kind of go by instinct. Okay. Time to get our chicken staged and breaded. We're going to open things up here. Pull that dude out and get it in the flour. We really want to get that thing, all the wet spots, we want coated with flour. So we don't want any piece of that chicken that doesn't have flour embedded into it. So wrestle that thing around with your hands. Make sure any spots that come up that are still damp like that, bread those dudes. Bread that stuff. Make sure that that thing is fully Encased in breading. Then stage him off to the side and get an next one. And do the same thing. The longer you let this marinate, the better off you're going to be. We were in a little bit of a hurry for this video, so we didn't get to marinate quite as long as I'd like to. But it's still going to be real good. For sure. No doubt. Again, no wet spots. I just, okay. Now we're ready to go over to the oil. All right, so when I start to see this moving around, I know it's hot enough. I can see a little bit of rippling on the top of that dude. So we're gonna get our first piece of chicken here. We'll put him right in there. Look at that. Our second piece and nuzzle him in there. And we got one more if we don't overflow. Woo, look at that. Man, that was close. All right. Now we need this chicken 
to be 160 degrees on the inside. 160 degrees. And check that with a meat thermometer to make sure. But we need to let that sit and fry for a minute. And you can see that has risen up a little bit from where it originally dropped in. It's kind of almost floating a little bit now. We'll go ahead and pick one of these dudes up and look at the bottom. Look at that. Oh, man. It's just about there. We're going to give it just a couple more minutes. Get a little bit more golden brown. That's going to help ensure that interior temperature as well. Okay. Just kind of look at the back side here. And if it's nice and golden brown, it's ready to turn. A little hot there. The rest of it looks really good, though. we got one spot right there that got a little hot. I think we're still fine, though. Now, once we think we're getting close, we can always just shove a meat thermometer in there and see where we're at. All right, we're sitting at about 150 right now, so we'll probably flip them one time. Give it five more minutes, and we'll be at 160, and we'll be ready to taste this chicken. Okay, let's see what we got going on here. We got a local bottle of pop here today. This is a ski. If you ain't from Jackson or Wellston, you probably never heard of ski. But if you're from around here, you've drunk your fair share, guaranteed. The lemon lime pop got some of the pulp in it. It's fantastic. Got a few slices of sharp cheddar cheese here. I'm gonna grab us a chicken thigh out of here and see what we got. Break into this dude. A little extra crispy going on. I love it. Pull some of that skin back. Man, look at that. Thing is perfect on the inside. Perfect. Oh, man. Ooh -wee. So good. It's still too hot to just pick it up and eat it. I guarantee you that. Although, Azan would surely try. Nice and moist. Oh, man. Thing looks so good. Oh, man. That chicken is perfect. All right, Zon, hold on, buddy. Here, here's on. I was like, let me up on some of that extra crispy. Uh huh. I'm saying to you. Oh, man. Woo. I know you want a piece of meat, don't you? Here you go. Hot, Dom. Hot, hot. Careful. Oh, man. Well, that thing is just absolutely falling off the bone once you get under that skin. A little sharp cheddar cheese at that. Oh, man. Now, one thing that make that a little better. A little Old Bay hot sauce. Uh-huh. See what kind of trick action that does for us. <laughs> Man. Well, that's good. Man, that's good. That skin is great. Mm. Mm -mm. Man, that's good. Golly. So if you never had ski, definitely like everything else, better in the bottle. But if you got relatives in Ohio, haven't found you some ski and sent it to you, you won't believe how good this stuff is. It's amazing. It's got a little bit of a... It's got a little bit of an orange taste to it. Orange and lime. Really, really, really good. It's different than Mountain Dew or 7-Up or Mellow Yellow. It's different than all of those lemon-lime type drinks. This thing is way better. Way better. 
Love it. Love it. Queen Play Club going on here, boys. Woo! Well, I got to tell you, me and Zon killed two pieces of chicken. About half of this, half of this block of cheese I brought out of here. And I'm on my second ski before we could even get the outro done. So this was some really, really good food. With any type of meat that you're cooking outdoors, you want to make sure you get it to the right temperature. And poultry is very, very important. So if you've got some kind of a thermometer that you can bring with you in your backpack or whatever in your vehicle, if you're camping and you've got conveyance, then it's very simple to bring a thermometer with you, but it's a piece of critical gear when it comes to cooking in the outdoors, especially, again, if you're cooking things like poultry, it's especially important. Pork, it's especially important. So remember those things when you're cooking outdoors and stay safe. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video in this series as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.